I woke up in a hospital to a $55,000 bill. Now I'm broke, so I want to get the money back by any means necessary. Am I the a-hole? I was in Nassas, Bahamas. I'm guessing that's the Bahamas. And suffered a stroke unexpectedly. I'm young, low 30s, and an overall pretty active and healthy. And so a stroke was the last thing I would expect to happen at this time in my life. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's awful. So when the stroke hit the left side of my body, I went limp. I wasn't able to talk, walk, or function. It is similar to being paralyzed and all around sucks. I imagine it sucks a lot. Yeah. I would not recommend a stroke to anyone. The hotel thankfully called an ambulance, which brought me to a hospital. And here's where the fun begins, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up, step right up. Let's listen to the story. My girlfriend, let's call her T, went to give them my health insurance card when I was admitted, which covers me internationally. But the hospital refused my insurance and said I don't have coverage and insisted on a cash payment or they would not treat me. Wow. When you're having a stroke, a minute count so she gave them whatever they wanted to treat me oh this is when t gave them my credit card important note t is not an authorized card holder on my credit card account she does not have her own card nor is she an authorized signer or user on my account she simply went into my wallet while i was unconscious and gave it to them so i was not able to step in and deal with the situation i woke up hours later to t crying by my bedside she was explaining to me the situation even though i was conscious I was not able to process nor had the energy to respond. She was explaining that they would chase her down the hallway for 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 at a time, whatever they could, as if buying a used car. Wow. It was surreal and makes me so mad, but she did not have any other options at the time. She notified my parents who showed up a day later. My father was raising hell about them not taking my insurance when he arrived, but it was not the time to argue and he made arrangements to get me back to the States. So they're charging him up the wazoo. Yeah, I mean, this is insane. He is not an authorized user on my credit card account, but she was doing what she thought was best for me while trying not to let me die. I think anyone else would have done the same. Which, I mean, like, I don't, what else do you do in this situation? There really is nothing else. Except try to perform the surgery yourself. Exactly. You know, just do the open heart surgery on your own. Pull up a YouTube video and freaking do it. Come on. Long story short, I was transported via air ambulance back to the States, Pompano Beach, Florida, where my health insurance took over. And now the dust has settled. I have $55,000 in charges on my credit card from said hospital in the Bahamas. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. I have spoken to my insurance company and they said the hospital should have taken the insurance when I was admitted, but the hospital prefers cash because insurance companies will pay discounted rates, whereas cash out of pocket is subject to whatever the hospital charges. The insurance company will not reimburse me for the full amount as that is not what they would have paid the hospital. Ugh. Since T is not an authorized user and she signed all the credit card receipts, I already attempted to charge back the charges, but the credit card company has rejected this as a claim stating I have benefited from the services at the hospital and it's not considered fraud. I'm not trying to stiff the hospital on their bill. Rather, I want my money back and have my health insurance company pay them what they should have been paid. My blood boils knowing that they chased a grieving, emotional girl for money knowing what they were doing. They took complete advantage of the situation. So, does anyone out there have any advice or work for Bank of America Disputes Department that can help guide me anyway? Or should I bother contacting a lawyer in the Bahamas? I assume I have to deal with an attorney over there and not here, correct? If so, a contact or advice on how to find one over there would be great. Complete side note on where I'm at today. I'm in rehab full time and started walking a few weeks ago for the first time. And since the stroke, it's not a pretty walk, but gets me around. My left arm is still flaccid, but starting to move. So I'm encouraged and the D think six to 12 months to get full movement back and say that being young is one of the advantages in rehab. So I guess the silver lining is at least he had his freaking heart attack when he's 30 and can get most of his movement back. There you go. I typed this post using voice dictation software. Apologies for any typos, grammatical errors, or formatting. I sucked with grammar before the stroke. And John, there is an update, but what do you think? What should OP do? I mean, definitely like 
We are not like the uh, the premier experts in healthcare law or anything here, but I feel like kind of what OP was listing out, like contact a lawyer in the Bahamas, keep calling around, like asking all of these professionals, like, hey, what are all of my like viable options here to get the money back? Because I, f I feel like there is a way. There has to be. I mean, that's really sketchy. But there is an update, John. Let's get into it. Update. United came through and paid 95% of the charges, but 100 100% of the hospital bill. They shorted me 4,600 because the hospital overcharged me, meaning the invoices added up to more than when they ran their card. Hospital is a bunch of thieves. So now I have to see if the hospital will refund me an overage or open a new dispute with B of A, Bank of America for the overage. Thank you for all the advice. Life lessons have been added to the list. So at least it ended up with yes. not a $55,000 uh. bill. I'm so glad to to hear that. And and you know like in the grand scheme of things, even if OP can like definitely dispute and do and and you know do your thing cuz also it's like just on the principle of the overcharging and and and, yeah. and whatnot, OP should fight it, but even yeah, if but OP dude, never gets their money back, not bad. Not bad. Going from 55k to 44.6k, 4. not a bad decrease. I mean, what I would love to hear is I would love to hear everyone's like you know, healthcare stuff. I, I imagine there are some shit stories with the American healthcare system or any healthcare system. So if you have any terrible experiences like this, we'd love to hear them. I mean, my small one is I was trying to get these lumps on my leg removed. It's just like little fatty deposits. And my dermatologist was like, oh, pff, covered by insurance, totally fine. Got it removed, right? And then I came back to get the stitches out. And apparently, I think this is pretty snaky, but the insurance covered the opening of it and the removal but the stitching of it back and then the removal of the stitches was a thousand dollars come on how shitty is that dude that how is so is that? slimy yeah, yeah it's like oh yeah we can remove it no cost but if you want your if you want to be stitched back up and those stitches removed then it's gonna cost you like what do you think the person gonna say like oh awesome thanks like yeah yeah those stitches were totally worth a thousand absolutely not like of course some, someone's gonna be like i came in for the procedure if you tell me yeah. The yeah, procedure's yeah. free, then it's free. If what, it's not, am I just going to leave with a gaping hole? Like, like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, literally. American healthcare system is... Yeah, it is. Did I just find $1 million? I just discovered my grandpa's hidden treasure. But now my gold digging family is coming for me. I think I'm just going to steal it all myself. Am I the a-hole? Mr. Beast bought an island for $800,000. i am just buying a remote island and, and, and hiding away. I, 26 male, recently bought out my cousins and siblings' shares in our our ancestral family home. My family has lived here since the 1920s. It is on a lake and my wife and I plan on using it as a vacation home and rent it out on Airbnb. The home needs a lot of work as it hasn't been maintained. Before he bought it, we asked everyone to come and take what they wanted. The house was filled with decades of stuff. They took what they wanted and that was the end of it. As we have begun demoing an upstairs bedroom, we found a loose floorboard. Hmm. After removing some carpet under the floorboard, we found a metal box with an old lock on it and a coffee can filled with old coins. We cut the lock and found $2,000 in bills from the 1960s, a pocket watch, gold cufflinks, ruby earrings, sapphire and diamond bracelets, and a pearl necklace. Got a good haul. For real. Based off of this, we think it belonged to my great-grandparents who died in an accident in 1963. I called my mother and told her what we found. She was shocked. My great-grandfather didn't trust banks and had hidden valuables all over the place. Apparently, a lot of people did this after the Great Depression. My mother thought they had found everything. She is now asking that we hand it all over, sell it, and split it between the family members. Mama, there's this little thing called finders keepers. Losers weepers. I said I would give them the cash and the antique coins, but I would like to hold on to the jewelry to pass on to my future children. My mother said that my siblings need the money because they are both unemployed due to the whole global situation. She considers what I found family properly. Legally, I purchased everything in the house, so I think I am covered. My mom and uncle are saying we cannot come to Christmas if we don't hand it over, so am I the a-hole for not splitting the lost family treasure? John, what do you think? Man. Also, how much do you think it's worth? Put your answers in the comments. How much you think this whole treasure is worth right here? I actually think if it was their grandparents, they probably would have wanted the parents to inherit it. I think it should be split among the family. Here, here, here we go. I think I got it. Appraise it. 
divide the value by how many people there are, you know, the parents, the grandchildren, et cetera, and then divvy it up. And then, yeah, if OP does want to pass down, like maybe like the Sapphire earrings, for example, buy out the rest of the value for that and then pass it down. I think that that's the most fair thing. My husband's new bimbo is stealing my daughter's money and clothes. I'm going to sue for full custody. So am I the a-hole? Why don't we take him for everything they got? I, 36 female, have a daughter, Sadie, 12, with my ex-husband, John, 39. We got divorced five years ago and I have primary custody while he sees her two weekends a month. Last year, he got married to Amanda, who has sole custody of her kids, 10 and 8 female from a previous marriage. Amanda is a stay at home mom, not for any health reasons or so on. She just doesn't want to work while John works at a nine to five. He makes good money to support them, but not enough to live in luxury. I have a much higher paying job. All right. OP. Oh. Since, it's, oh my God. Since it just means Sadie, I make sure she has the best possible life. She goes to private school, set her up a college fund, and she has much better things than most kids, phones, clothes, etc. I still manage to raise her to be humble and not take things for granted. And she's one of the hardest working people I know, always making sure to get good grades and keep her room tidy. There you go. Well, the last few times she came back after a weekend at John's, I noticed that the clothes she was bringing back in her duffel are A, not her size, and B, much cheaper and poorer quality than what I usually buy her. I asked her why that is, and she told me that while she's at her dad's, Amanda takes away her nice clothes and gives them to her kids while Sadie gets the clothes they buy from Target. Wow. <laughs> oh this is like the worst case gosh. of Robin Hood I've ever heard. Let's take <laughs> from the rich your kids and give to the poor my kids. I asked if she wanted them back, but she said she didn't mind sharing since all her favorite clothes were kept here, which is a phenomenal attitude. The problem came when I went to pick her up last weekend. I had a business meeting and couldn't drive her over, so Amanda offered to just pick Sadie up from school, which hadn't happened before. When I got there on Sunday, John and Amanda asked me to sit down with them, and when Sadie came to hug me, Amanda sent her to her room quite harshly saying her punishment wasn't over yet. I was confused because Sadie very rarely misbehaves. They sat me down in the kitchen and said it was unfair for Sadie to be going to private school while her kids had to go to a public one. So they had decided that Sadie would be pulled out of the private school and put in the same school as the girls. What? You're fucking bonkers. What the f and this is like a private school that OP is paying for. You do not get no. to decide this. They said I should keep up Sadie's punishment because when they told her, she blew up at them, told them it wasn't fair and yelled that Amanda and her kids weren't even her real family, that all they did was steal, which is freaking true. How dare you tell the truth? I told them in no uncertain terms to f*** off. I would not be pulling my child out of a school she likes away from her friends because they can't afford it. I told them they could easily make as much money as me if Amanda started working in her field because she has the qualifications and the job market is very good. I told them that their money problems are not my issue. And if Sadie's items get stolen again or they try to pull her out of school, I'll be taking them to court. Yeah. They've been blowing up my phone ever since, calling me selfish an a-hole and after telling the story to a friend he told me i was rubbing my success in their face but i still don't feel like i did anything wrong so am i the a-hole and there is an edit and an update but i want your gut check right now absolute Lee, not. Not at all. This other couple is crazy. They're absolutely, the ex couple Bonkers. is insane. How do they think that's okay? I just don't know how they think it's okay to pull a kid out of the school they've been going to randomly. A, okay, already a big one. And then B, like, like are you really think you're going to like get away with this? And like that you have the authority? Like, ah. Okay, Ooh. so here's the edit. Okay. I got temporary guardianship while waiting for a court hearing. We're going to try to get full custody and have John get one day a week of visitation supervised for at least the first few months and no contact with Amanda or her kids. This way he still sees Sadie just as much and they can try to repair the relationship, but she doesn't have to go back there. All contact between us is made through emails, which are CC'd by my lawyer. And I've asked for Sadie's things back. I've talked to Sadie and we decided that she's going to try therapy for a little while to help deal with everything that's happened. And here's the update. We've had the hearing and our custody arrangements been modified. 
Amy, how any and all decisions relating to Sadie are made by me and me alone. Woo! John has supervised visitation once a week and Sadie will continue in therapy to deal with all the issues Amanda and co have, have caused her. They tried to push for 50-50 custody split on grounds of alienation. So me trying to put Sadie against my father, but we made it clear from the start that we wanted to keep Amanda and her children away and wanted supervision only because we don't feel safe leaving him alone as of yet, but that we were open to modifications. Thanks to that, the proof of stealing and Sadie's therapist testimony, their claim was thrown out pretty quickly. Yes. Amanda's pissed and has tried to contact me and Sadie, but I made it clear that if she keeps harassing me or my daughter, I'll have to make this known to the authorities. Sadie and I have blocked her everywhere and any communication between John and us is made through text messages or emails only. I'd like to thank you all for the support throughout this. Really means a lot to us. Sending you loads of love. And that's the end of the story. Wow. So I want to, to kick it to the comments. I mean, what do you think of this situation? Do you think OP made the right decision by getting full custody of the kids? Was that too much? Was it too little? Let us know in the comments below. John, what do you think? Uh, not at all. I think OP was not only way in the right, but it was also like very smart about it and reasonable. Like, like OP was like, I do want to have still some visitation. I am open to like, you know, basically a very open and I would say very empathetic approach considering how unempathetic and what assholes that shit the crazy other guys this dude was. Yeah. Oh my God. God, my mom is trying to steal my liver to save her life. The thing is, I don't really care if she dies. Am I the a-hole? When I was a kid, my mom was pretty awful to me and my sibling. Resentful, a bit of a bully, never hugged any of us, and mainly told us how we ruined her life. You get the picture. I moved out at 17 to keep my sanity. Sounds like a lovely home life. <laughs> so nice. I'm 28 now and have never had much of a relationship with her after moving out, as she never once admitted that she had done something really effed up to us. My sister is married and has two kids. My brother is divorced with three kids. I got a call from the hospital that my mom managed to drink her liver out of order and needs a transplant. All of us siblings were found out to be a match. My sister and brother, once they realized that cutting out part of your liver isn't risk-free, backed out. I was told I have something called situs inversus, meaning my organs are abnormally placed and that it would make the risk of surgery higher for me. 4% risk of death within two weeks of surgery and higher risk of other awful happening. And of course, a hundred percent guarantee that my mother will drink away that liver too. Yeah. That's the other thing is you're almost like enabling. Now everyone, the doctor, my mom, siblings, everyone is telling me I should do it because I don't have kids. So who cares if the risk is high? You don't have kids. Bro, so you're useless. You're a waste of human life. You're not popping out babies like a Gatlin gun. This pissed me off. My family never valued my lifestyle as I decided not to do life by the script. I bought a cabin in the wilderness in the north and work from home. So I rarely have to leave my lovely little hideaway. I make enough money to live the life I have always dreamed of. But apparently that does not count since I don't want kids. And my mom, who never cared if I lived or died, suddenly thinks she deserves my liver because she gave birth to me. She's a vending machine of organs, you know? It's mm -hmm. like B3, liver please. The fact that she then spent 17 years bullying me is irrelevant because family and kids are a gift from God. Well, fuck them all. The doctor said to me, well, it is an increased risk, but your mother needs a new liver. At least you don't risk leaving children behind. Fuck that. I was so stunned. I forgot the entire Swedish language and just sat there. I'm guessing OP is from Sweden. What did I just hear? And who will care for my pets if I die? OP's a dog mom. Oh, come on. You know? Fur babies. And my mom, well, I gave you my life. You should do the same for me. After all, I gave you my best years and raising you was no joke. She also gave me two fractured ribs and one time locked me out of the house in the middle of winter and I had to smash a window with my hand to get in. I can't believe I even tried that I agreed to be tested as a donor as if she would have magically changed. I'm leaving the city tonight, taking the train north and will hopefully be back in my cozy home tomorrow. When the doctor calls to hear my decision, I might not even pick up. Cold. And guess what, John? What? There's a freaking update. Oh, goodness. OP sent an image of where they live, and it's 
beautiful. I have spoken to the people involved, my mom, my siblings, and the medical staff, and I'm told everyone that I won't donate a part of my liver to my alcoholic mother. The doctor at the hospital where my mother was treated initially when her liver crashed simply said, I understand, but that also means that I must inform you, you need to prepare to say goodbye to her in a not so distant future. I might not particularly like my mother, but I don't wish death on anyone, so that sucks, but again, she drank her own liver away. It took years of hard work to reach the place where she is now. She's been to several clinics on all sorts of help. She would stay until they stopped treating her with Oxus can and then check out and start it all over again. So much of the taxpayer's money has been spent and thrown away on her and she refuses to take any responsibility at all. It's always the nurses or the doctor's fault that she drinks. They don't give me the right treatment. I think she would do the same to any donated liver. And I told the doctor this. My sister said, that she understood. And now that things have had time to calm down a bit, she even said that she thinks it's the right thing to do. My brother does not agree with my decision. So maybe donate your own liver, bro. Come on. Which actually OP said, and I told him that he can donate a nice slice of his own liver then. But then of course he tells me he can't because he's got kids and it's too much of a risk for him. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am obviously disposable. And my mother. So I honestly can't be bothered to type it out. I phoned her to tell her her that she will not be getting my liver. And as expected, she went from jovial to resentful by the drop of a hat. Everything from, I'm your mother, you only get one mother, to you must be there for family, was thrown at me. She even referred to the fact that I once risked my life for my dog when she went through the ice on a frozen lake, but you won't do this for your mom? No, no, I will not actually. She said many awful things. I guess I can understand understand that she's upset and scared, but even I have a limit how much of that I'm willing to stand. So eventually I just said, I'm done. And I hung up. Not sure what to expect now. Don't really care either. I'm glad that my sister came around. Perhaps my brother will, if given time, maybe not. Either way, I'm happy to have made my decision clear. Now that it's done, I can get back to enjoying my life far from the mall in the comfort of my home and the company of my awesome dogs. OP's colder than an iced liver fresh off the surgery. Colder than her dog when it fell through the ice. I mean, okay, so my question is, if your parent <laughs> yeah. was dying of liver cancer, would you give your liver to them? Let's let's say they don't have a drinking problem. They just had liver cancer. Right, right, right. right. Would you give your liver to your mom or dad? I want to hear what everyone else in the comments says and why. John, you would? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, my mom is not like this mom. <laughs> like, yeah. this mom is crazy. Yeah, no, I would de I would definitely do it. But I, I think I think it's also an interesting scenario of, like, putting yourself in OP shoes of, like, if this person is your mom, would you yeah. do the same thing? If this person is my mom, I wouldn't. If, yeah. if it was my actual mom, I would give my liver yeah but would you give your liver to your mom put your answers in the comments and tell us why my friend is jealous of my special needs privileges and demands that i don't need them it's not my fault i have a disability am i the a-hole about a year ago my university added psychological problems to the special needs student requests okay I have been diagnosed with severe anxiety and clinical depression, so I decided to apply to the program. The program is strictly enforced, and they requested my diagnosis, the date, and the doctor. Then they contacted my doctor about it. Well, I got in, and I now have about 50% more time in my exams, and I'm able to record the lectures. I can get them from the program when I need. There's some absences allowed, et cetera, et cetera. One of my friends learned about my special needs status, and then confronted me. The first thing you do whenever your friends get a di yeah, under the a special diagnosis. Needs. You just got cancer? How dare you? They told me since I was stable and functioning, I shouldn't be using the program and I was probably taking away from someone who needed it more. It's true that I have been in therapy for a while and I've been taking my medication. My panic attacks are less frequent and less damaging. She called me an a-hole for taking part in a program that is quote unquote not meant for me. Some of my friends told me that they agree with her and that they have also been thinking this for a while. Wait, so they're all mad that OP's getting better? So now I am truly conflicted. On one hand, I truly benefited from the program, but on the other hand, maybe they're right and I'm using this selfishly. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Now there is an update, but Sam, as of right now, do you think OP is the a-hole? No, I mean, the school is deciding who gets into the program yes. and who doesn't, mm -hmm. and they are deciding the criteria. If OP fits the criteria, then they get in. 
OP got in fair and square. Who, who are OP's friends to say that you're not disabled enough for the rest <laughs> of life? First of all, thank you to everyone for the encouragement to use my special needs status and to confront my friend about her reaction. I admit I used some of your words when talking to her to better explain myself. So we talked. And at first it seemed like she was sympathetic to my situation, but after a while, she told me that I was exaggerating and she specifically told me, quote, I deal with depression and anxiety and I don't need a program. Well, uh, good uh, for uh. you. Then I guess you don't need the program. Congratulations. Oh, OP my God. He wants the program. You don't. She expressed that she feels as though this was encouraging me to be lazy. And while she understood there wasn't a limit to students in the program, she told me that I was being unfair to those with learning disabilities by getting the same accommodations. I tried to explain my accommodations, my need to get more time because of a panic attack I had during a proctored Zoom exam, but she kind of flamed up and shouted that it wasn't fair to her that she was not getting the same treatment. She felt like the university was playing favorites. Has she applied? Have you applied? I decided to remove myself from a situation and told her that I was rethinking our friendship and not to contact me for now. So there it is. Not a happy update, but I at least got to explain myself. I'm also contemplating whether I should send this post to her for her to see other people's reactions, but I'm not sure. Honestly, I think it could help. Like maybe, maybe that would help. To... I think that probably would help to show her how much of a dumb dumb she's being thank you guys again you all really helped me with my confidence in this situation i love when reddit actually comes out to bat for people that is a beautiful moment when it happens quick question so i think we've we've discovered op is not the a-hole is the friend the a-hole for saying this to the friend yeah i think the friend is the a-hole i think op should send the the reddit post my selfish husband stole my bonus and spend it on himself no one takes my money and lives am i the a-hole and lives hey you gotta know what you gotta know i am not sure how to do this or if this is the right community i would like some objective third party advice i put for my current situation as i am at a loss the history my husband 28 male and i 27 female have been married for about four years now we dated in college and got married afterwards he finished college with a finance degree and thought he would go into accounting big money bags over Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Finance. Ooh. My man quickly found out that accounting was not his passion. He started bouncing around jobs and ideas, business ideas, being a teacher, being a lawyer, but nothing really kept him saying, this is what I want to do. My passion. This was pre-COVID. Since COVID, he has not attempted anything. And he (laughs) said... He says, after the pandemic, there will be a boom in jobs and he can find something easily then that he's passionate about. Man is the king of procrastination. (laughs) I'm I'm telling you, baby. When this pandemic blows over, then I'll look for something. I've been working full time and thankfully my job became remote and pays the bills while putting food on the table. What is he doing all that? Playing video games or like masturbating? After the fiscal year closed out, my work was done really well. We sell medical testing equipment so it was a big product of 2020 i was given a promotion i got a little pay raise and a small bonus i was really excited because i could finally repair my purse and replace my shoes my friend's puppy destroyed it but i acknowledge i should not have left my purse on such a low stool in front of the puppy's bed so my fault uh side note totally not your fault op the friend should pay for that i was so excited to tell my husband but he seemed more excited than me over this promotion he started going off on how he could redo his game area and get the nice new system since he was tired of his others. Bro, why would she get you something that's just going to make you more of a piece of shit? I was dumbfounded. I got really quiet because I almost could not believe what he was saying. He eventually goes out and gets himself a new system chair and a mouse. Is he trying to become a streamer? He had basically spent my bonus. I was so upset and ultimately hurt and numb. We ended up getting into an argument and he called me selfish for not being happy that he got to achieve his dream. And I'm being spoiled for being upset that I couldn't spend this money on me first. It's her money. I basically called him an ungrateful a-hole and asked, why does he deserve new stuff when I have been providing? He got really quiet on that one and just stormed out saying that he would be staying with his family only about an hour 
away. And I've been getting angry calls and texts due to the fact that he doesn't feel supported in his own home. Supported doing what? And if I'm making the money, then I can get whatever I want when I want. And I shouldn't throw it in his face that he doesn't have an income, which is not true. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to keep a roof over his head and food on the table. All of his friends and family think I'm way overreacting to something that makes my husband happy. How about you get a job or just just contribute or work in some way, manner or fashion. Do anything but play video games and, and steal money. And the next time we get a large sum of money, my husband said that he would let me repair my purse. I haven't responded and don't think I will for a few days, but I've gotten so many you're such a B and you're the a-hole. I'm starting to wonder if I really am. There is a, oh An wow, update. a pretty meaty update a actually. juicy update. What should, is OP the a-hole? What should OP do? Yeah. Let us know in the comments what Put you it think. in the comments right but, now. But Sam. I feel like no matter the gender of your partner, just like bringing something to the table is important. And But that could look like a different bunch of ways. It could look like, you know, helping out with the house, taking care of kids. All right, well, let's see this update. Let's see, let's see. I was not expecting this kind of support. I appreciate all the kind messages and compassion. This is more than I've ever felt in my life, so thank you, Reddit. I took the weekend to reflect on what I want and read through the comments and messages. I see your point in that I can't keep treating this like a marriage if he doesn't. So here's to today and my first steps towards freedom. I am separating the finances immediately and contacting a local lawyer to see my options and rights as well as therapy options for him. I will present this to him and he gets to choose, but I refuse to baby an almost 30 year old. If he wants that, well, he has his mother. Beep, 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 beep. And we have one final update. I want to thank everyone who reached out and snapped me out of this daze with my soon to be ex. He was extremely toxic and just made me feel not worth anything. Thus, probably why it was so hard to see he wasn't it. So I want to thank everyone who offered words of encouragement and even the tough love I needed to hear it. After we went back to his parents, he was waiting for my apology, which I never did. And when he noticed I drained our joint bank account, he escalated saying I was his and how I could never actually leave him and that he owned me. Oh my God. All of my success was his and without him, I would be a loser dropout. His family was even worse. I had already blocked them. So they started making fake accounts and using apps to hide their number to harass me, saying I ruined their son's life and how he sacrificed sacrificed everything to get me where I am to throw him to what the side. What did he sacrifice? He wouldn't even sacrifice his gaming console for your purse. And that this was disgusting and that I deserve to rot. I provided all of this to my lawyer who recommended that I take a restraining order in case he wanted to escalate further and not to engage ever, but just to keep the record. This has caused my anxiety to go through the roof and I'm working on this with my therapist. I've separated the finances completely and changed my banks, even told them my soon to be ex is never allowed to access these accounts because he would take it all and run. I have changed my number and gone completely dark on social media besides this. Part of me is broken that our marriage came to an end over a computer. I keep thinking I am stupid and how I couldn't see the warning signs. I must look like a fool to everyone. All in all, I'm slowly picking up the pieces of my life and figuring out how to move forward. Thank you to anyone still reading this and thank you everyone who helped get me here. OP, you've been through the ringer, but I feel like this is... Probably the best conclusion that yeah. we could have hoped yes. for. It sounds like the guy completely just showed his colors and better that he show you and you get out of it than like, you know, him string you along. Imagine spending your years. whole life with this guy. I mean, that would be Ick. awful. Uh, so please share, share your stories of your significant other being a piece of and not working at all. If you have those. My boyfriend is boning a stranger, so I broke into his house and caught him inside her. He yelled at me for spying on him. Am I the a-hole? Give the man some privacy. <laughs> no. My boyfriend is cheating on me with an 18-year-old who still lives with her parents. He is 36. Man's robbing the cradle over here. He, my boyfriend, passed me his phone and a message came through saying, I miss you, babe. But how many emojis were there? No emojis. <laughs> that we know no of. That we know of. That okay, we know that we know of. He travels a lot for work and he had just gotten back that weekend. I said nothing. I was taken aback. I spent that night at his place and checked his phone while he slept and I confirmed it. 
Oh, no. All the time while I was texting him and he never responded to me, he was talking to her. An effing 18-year-old who he had mentioned in the past was the daughter of a family friend. Oh, Oh, that cannot be a good look for that family friend relationship. He mentioned how he missed her, how much he wanted her, and how much loving he needed when he got back. (laughs) All the while, he is telling me how much he loves me and wants a future with me. Bro, he just wants a future with both of them. Come on, is that so much to ask? I haven't confronted him about it. I don't even know how to. I've never been cheated on before and I feel dirty and disgusting. How can people be so Fine. Pretty rough, dude. It's like bad enough to cheat on someone, and then it's bad enough to cheat on someone who's like half your age, but then it's way worse to cheat on someone who is half your age and is your family friend. God, dude. Sam, we have a series of updates. Are you are you ready? I'm about to smack you with I don't know, man. I don't know. Yes. Thank you all for the support and responses. I am crying my eyes out. Some things to quickly clarify. We don't live together. However, I did leave something in his place that I need to get back. I did take some screenshots. The messages are creepy and disgusting. I do have the girl's phone number. And with a little digging, I found her parents' social media. Ooh, there's going to be some sweet revenge in the future. I agree that maybe I should not confront him, though part of me wants her parents to know the petty revenge. All right, on to update number two. Overwhelmed by this responses, some more context. He had mentioned this girl before and how he sort of defended her because someone was bullying her. She's very overweight. I never imagined he would be screwing her. Based on the conversation, she's got some self-esteem issues and he comes across as a creep. Example. He tells her that she is too young and he doesn't think she's ready for the ride, even though he's all about her. Her response is that she likes that he has his life put together and that she will do anything for him. His response, I want you and hope you know you're mine now. Weird, bro. This is some manipulation. I feel gross even writing this. I don't know how long this has been going for. The conversation in the screenshots started over a week ago, and it seems like he has been deleting them. Yikes. Also, I don't know for how long he's known this family. He lived out of state for a while, and he's only been here for three years or so. We've been together for one year. And no, I'm not blaming this girl. As far as I know, she's unaware of my existence, too. I found out over the weekend. I was in shock, but I didn't confront him about it, so it's still very raw. Regarding exposing him, he's going to get angry as his image is important to him and this coming out would damage it. Oh, Uh, yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. No shit. Bro, he knows where I work, where I live, and that I'm alone. I'm getting out and have to do it carefully because once he finds out that I outed him, he will retaliate. The final update. I decided to go to his place. I called him and texted him, letting him know I was on my way. He didn't respond. I still went. Stupid, I know. His car was there, so I called again. No response. Long story short, I saw them together by going and peeking through the back window. I knocked on the front door. And well, no surprise, she was in shock. He got angry and closed the door in my face. I walked away. He proceeded to text that showing up unannounced was crappy. And I just replied that it would be the last time. You know what else is crappy? You cheating on me with this 18 year old family friend. I couldn't get my things, which wasn't a lot. So I will just take that as a loss. It's over. While I don't have family around, I do have a solid friend group. He's blocked everywhere and I just want to hide under a rock for a while. How can I be so effing blind and stupid? Whether I'll send the messages to the parents, I haven't decided yet. Plus the possibility of him coming after me. As selfish as it sounds, I got to take care of myself first or I'm going to lose it completely. If she didn't know about me, now she knows. And if she did, I just feel sorry for her. I truly appreciate the supporting and caring comments. And yes, as of last night, that piece of doo-doo man is out of my life. Thank God. Wow. I mean, I I would love to hear everyone's like cheating stories. Yeah. uh, If they've ever caught a partner cheating. I think she made the right decision in leaving this guy. I think also do what makes her feel best. You know, like, you know, don't bend over backwards to do like, like what you think is best for like the other girl or for him. Like just, 
you know, you need to take care of your mental health first. Yeah. And then maybe once you're feeling in a better place, you can talk about talking to the parents. But yeah, protect yourself first. The car salesman was sexist, so I bought the car from someone else. He lost his commission and made nothing. Am I the a-hole? I need a new car as my old one is over 35 years old and on its last legs, OP, your dummy, cars have wheels. (laughs) (laughs) I also decided to get an upper end luxury car, which was a huge upgrade from my old but reliable Volvo since I figured I'd earned it and I could pay for it outright. I took my boyfriend with me to the dealership as you do as a couple. A salesman approached us and the entire time from start to finish kept talking to my boyfriend even though I clearly introduced myself and told him the car was for me and that I would be paying for it outright. He's like, all right, honey, that's that's super sweet of you, but uh, what does the man think about this car? Yeah. My boyfriend was off put by the whole thing, kept referring the salesman to me when he asked my boyfriend a question and even pointedly said at some point, I don't know. It's Delicious Cancel's car, ask her. The salesman would look at me. I'd answer the next question and then back to the boyfriend. The only question I was asked was around color preference and leather versus fabric interior. I was kind of fuming at this point. The final straw was after the test drive. Again, this is a car for OP. The salesman gave the keys to the boyfriend. I said that I really liked the guy and he turned to my boyfriend and said if he should get the paper work ready. I interjected and said I wanted to think about it. I had already decided on the car, but I didn't want the commission to go to him. My boyfriend could tell I was a bit upset about this interaction and offered to go to another dealership with me tomorrow or leave a review or something. So the boyfriend's like, let's just... Yeah. Curse him out over Google reviews. So we left and came back the next morning to the same car dealership. A different salesperson greeted us, and this one was much better. Ridiculously charming, flattered me by saying, a hardworking woman like me deserved a good car. And all the flattery I was expecting when being sold to. And then he asked for my number. No. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, is this yeah. going to be, I left my boyfriend for the car salesman? <laughs> I told him we'd driven the car yesterday and decided to buy it. And we did, so no hassles. I even managed to negotiate some extras since I told him I was giving him a sale for very little effort on his part. I was recounting this story to a friend of mine yesterday who is in sales, but in IT, told me I was a bit of an a-hole because a previous salesman had done all the work and I gave the sale to someone else when I was wanting to buy the car anyway. The guy was (laughs) sexist though. He said I should have asserted myself a bit more on the spot and given the previous sales more of a chance rather than try to screw him over behind his back because now he'd never know why he'd lost the sales. It's not her job to say like, yo, you're being sexist and here's why. And let me uh, let me tell you about the Begdahl test really yeah. quick. Proof point to PowerPoint and why you're so sexist, sir. He also said that the sales job was tough and maybe old habits die hard. Or if I didn't want to buy from him at all, I should have given him a concrete reason so he could learn. I think my thing is it's 2020 and it's basic sales 101 to speak to the person who holds the purse strings. And it's not my job to teach a salesperson anything. I just want to have a smooth experience buying a car. So am I the a-hole for going out of my way to not give a sale to what I believed was a sexist salesman? I want to know what everyone thinks in the comments to be tapping the comments below. But John, what do you think? Again, not only is this guy being sexist, it it's he's also being bad at his job at the same time. He's like not, he's not being a good salesman. If someone doesn't want to buy from you, you're not a good salesman. What does a great salesperson do? Knows who the person is and you know works with them to to uh, give them exactly yeah. what they need. Like that is like the yeah. definition of a great salesperson. This it's person not is the someone opposite. who can identify a man and only talk to them. Exactly. That is not yeah. a great salesman. Yeah. <laughs> A grocery store Karen called the cops because I took my service dog into the store. But then my dog scared her kid. Am I the a-hole? The audacity. How dare you traumatize my child more than me? I have an invisible disability and a service dog. What? What's it? Just, like, like like something you, that you can't, can't see, see on the surface. Yeah, uh, yeah. An invisible disability. <laughs> thought- I turn invisible. <laughs> no one can see me. She's a cardiac alert dog. I bring her everywhere and it has been such a big quality of life difference for me. Yesterday, I was in Bulk Foods buying some supplies and brought my dog with me. While I was buying candy, a girl nearby started to cry. 
The mother walked over and started demanding that I leave the store immediately. God. I tried to tell her that my dog was working and was not a pet. She wasn't having any of it and didn't believe me because I was too young to have a medical condition. <laughs> too, too, too young, young. for a medical condition? She said that regardless of whether or not my dog was an authentic working dog, her child had autism and was terrified. So I had to leave immediately and wait until they were done shopping until I could come back inside because, you know, I refused and continued shopping. I simply went to another area of the store to get the rest of the stuff on my shopping list. The woman had to bring her child and leave the store because she was too scared. The entire time she kept saying, I should be ashamed of myself for scaring a child and refusing to leave. Edit, yes, my dog wears a harness with patches on it to clearly identify it as a service dog and to have people not distract while she's working. And there is an update, but John, gut check. What do you think? Is OP an a-hole for scaring an autistic kid with her dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're phrasing. <laughs> you set me up for failure there, buddy. No, no, no. John like, believes that all dogs should be used to scare autistic children. Yeah, no. I mean, like, <laughs> at the, Mr. Charles, kill. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like, Two people have have two needs and it's like, unfortunately, they are competing with each other. Yeah. Unfortunately, it just is what it is. Maybe the mom could have gone up and, and been like, hey, I know that this is a service dog, but my daughter is autistic. If there's any way like, you know, we can kind of just like kill it. <laughs> there's any way there's that any you way could can just murder your dog. your dog. You know, that that's a lot more reasonable. Maybe even that's too much. Just but go to the other side of the store. Yeah, just go. Just avoid it. Like but there is an update, John. OK. You OK. Know, like chlamydia. You're getting it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> so I saw the Karen with her child again, but this time in Walmart while I was grocery shopping. So Karen has appeared once more. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake of ignoring my dog when she was alerting to my heart rate. I genuinely thought she wanted the sandwich I was eating. Boy, was I wrong. I ended up really dizzy and out of breath and had to sit down in the corner of the store while she was doing deep pressure therapy. I must have been on the floor for about 10 minutes. During this time, a staff member at Walmart came over to check on me and asked if I was all right. They gave me a free bottle of water as well, and I'm very appreciative of that. Anyways, while I was down, the same child saw me again from a distance and had another meltdown. The child's mom already explained to me last time that her daughter had autism. She was screaming and crying about my dog because she was terrified. I can understand why she would be scared because my dog is by no means small. She is a 115 pound female cane corso. Yeah, those dogs are huge. 115 pounds is massive too. Oh, that's a beefy big boy. That's that's how big dog. Wow. That's a big dog. Dang. Aside from alert and response, she's also trained for mobility assistance. Her breed isn't typically used as a service dog, but she was a natural. I got her as a pet dog and she became the service dog I needed. She's 100% good girl. This woman did not leave the store with her child that was having a meltdown. Instead, she had the audacity to call 911 on me. Eventually, the cops show up and she kept shouting that I was faking having a disability because I was too young to actually be disabled, that it was illegal for me to have my service dog anywhere near food. <laughs> And that people like me are the reasons she has to suffer lockdowns. I'm Asian. Yikes. Oh. She said the least I could do is be considerate and stay home away from everyone and keep my dog at home where it belongs. My dog was very clearly vested with tags and says service dog. I showed the cops my medical note that I carry stating I require a service dog. In the end, the manager banned the woman from coming to the local Walmart for a year. Woo! Cops only gave her a warning for wasting their time and escorted her off the property. Bro. So, do you think OP is the a-hole for letting her dog loose on autistic children? <laughs> Again with the setup. OP is not the a-hole at all. The the shocking audacity of this Karen. This lady is like so beyond crazy. She's just, I feel like this, like Karen's like, these are just looking for reasons something. to be upset. Like again, she kept her daughter close to the dog after the daughter's freaking just out. Just remove the daughter from the situation. Remove her from you the know? situation. Take her outside. Like Leave her there. I get it's like inconvenient, <laughs> but it's like, leave her there. <laughs> I get it's inconvenient, but it's like, what can you do? Yeah. Like Walmart's big. Walmart is huge. Go to another area. Go Put to the blindfold bread section. on your kid. Give your kid an iPad. 
honestly, iPad is not a bad idea at all. Yeah. Like that could that could work. <laughs> Why not a blindfold? Something about removing vision from my child doesn't seem like the most optimal well, would solution. Would you rather have a, them have a meltdown? The Bro. kid probably barely has object permanence. Just delete it from view. Walmart Walmart is literally a, a warehouse. You can so easily find a blindfold. To- <laughs> They have so many options. <laughs> My coworker kidnapped a kid, but now she's changing her mind. Huh? She wants to kick him to the streets. I'm calling the cops. Am I the a-hole? My coworker is kind of a weirdo. I will call her Mary for the sake of this post. Her and her husband are one of those people that have a ton of adopted kids. Eight uh, so far. That's crazy. Is that like one of those like hack schemes where you get money because you adopt more kids and like, are they trying to <laughs> game the system? And they're super religious. To each his own. Mary enjoys telling everyone at work her business. So when she decided to adopt a kid from Ukraine, everybody heard about it. She went with an older kid because it was easier for her and her husband, she says. This was two years ago. Mary has always asked me to babysit the boy a couple of times. I'll call him Tony. And it's never been a problem because... I like kids. I didn't see any glaring problems despite Mary's constant dramatics about how awful the kid was and he seemed to like being over. It's just me and my boyfriend here and our place is small but clean and really well kept. Mary's house is disgusting for lack of a better word. I mean, I can imagine eight kids just running wild. Lately, Mary has been at work talking to anyone that'll listen about how awful Tony is, how horrible he is to the other kids, and how she going to get rid of him. Like, that's gotta be traumatic for the kid, oh, right? Oh, for sure. Like, oh. She sent out a freaking mass email to everyone in our department asking if someone wanted to take her kid from her. Bro, she calls it rehoming and that it's okay. I logged onto Facebook today and and same story. She has pics of Tony posted on her timeline advertising him for readoption and to contact her if interested. Yo, this sounds like a f- dog. Here are pictures of this kid. Do you want to adopt? I haven't replied to her email yet and I haven't commented on her post, but I'm this close to ripping into her for what she's doing. She's crossed the line from weird into full blown psycho. Should I call CPS? I called the police just now, but they sounded completely confused on what to do. They agreed to do a welfare check. This post is still up. Is this really legal? I don't know much about adoption and a quick search for rehoming gets the most results about animals. Any advice? Is there an update? There is an update. I got personal messages from people that worked for local and state governments and private agencies that were outside of my state, but offered their contact. Reddit coming in clutch, guys. Here we go. Let's go. I had people that spoke Russian and Ukrainian offering to help me contact through Ukrainian embassy and offered me contact information for embassy departments. People even contacted us offering money for Tony's immediate needs in the event we decided to take him in. No way. I'm sincerely touched by the genuine concern all of you had for Tony and his siblings. I hope one day I can tell Tony that despite everything that's happened, there's people out there like you guys that care about him. The information you guys gave us helped us act fast and got the ball rolling on the situation faster than me and my boyfriend would have figured out alone. I talked with the cops about the situation and honestly, they were just as confused as I was. The person I talked to on the phone was just as stumped, but he agreed that at a minimum, they did need to do a well welfare check. I've had experiences with welfare checks before, and I had the nagging feeling that something just wouldn't go right. Oh, no. And someone personal messaged me the priority line for my state's child protective services hotline. I got someone on the phone right away. And as soon as I mentioned that trafficking could be going on and that she advertised the kid on Facebook, it was a public post here too, people. They acted with a quickness. I gave them all the information I had on Mary and Tony and all the information I had from Mary about Tony's adoption. The person I spoke to right away said that she suspected that the adoption might not not even be legal. I was floored. I emailed all the screenshots I had to the person I spoke with and asked for a follow-up if that was at all possible. I said that myself and my boyfriend were willing to take
take Tony on a temporary basis if necessary, but the CPS representative said that likely wasn't possible. Then the waiting game began. Last night was probably the most stressful night I've ever had. At one point, I was ready to drive out to Mary's house myself, but was stopped by my boyfriend. It was tough. The cops followed up with us at approximately 2 a.m. Note that I hadn't heard from CPS. The officer I spoke with was very cautious and limited in what he said, but he told me that CPS arrived at the home shortly after he did. In not so many words, he implied that Mary had been talking with someone about meeting Tony the very next day and CPS's suspicions were confirmed. Tony's adoption was not legal. Tony was rehomed to Mary and her husband from another state where placement needs to be approved by a judge. They're like kicking the can down the road. He didn't elaborate further except to say that other issues came to light and all of the children were removed from the home for their own safety by CPS. Wow. He didn't say how long they were there, but said it wasn't a long time. Quote unquote. I was asked to drop off all emails and printouts of the station in the morning, and I agreed. My boyfriend and I wanted to make doubly sure that all of the cases were checked. So I called our local FBI office, who said they lacked jurisdiction in that matter, but would be writing up a complaint and referencing the issue to the State Department. We called the Ukraine embassy and made a detailed complaint and I included the contact information I had for the office from that apartment. It really hit the fan when I went into work to print out the email. Our company is pretty small and the company owner, I'll call her Big Ange because of her resemblance to the mob wives lady, had gotten wind of Mary's email. Big Ange was furious and waiting at Mary's desk to see if she would show up for work. My friend reported that Big Ange waited from 7.15 to 9.30 and that Mary came to work with a sob story about how her kids were being unfairly taken <laughs> away. Oh, man. Mary wanted time off from work to quote unquote clear her name and quote unquote devote herself to reclaiming her family from this misunderstanding. I wasn't there to witness this, but Big Ange, who has six kids herself, apparently ripped Mary a new Mary has been dismissed, and rumor has it that Big Ange may or may not allow her to claim unemployment. Wow. Oh, Big Ange is bringing down the hammer. My head is honestly still spinning from everything that has happened. The past 24 hours have been insanity. I'm so grateful that the system worked as quickly as it did. I only hope it works out a long-term solution to this problem and that Mary doesn't get to reclaim her kids. My heart is breaking for Tony and the other kids right now. I don't know what the... F was happening in Mary's house that made CPS remove them that night, but I'm going to sleep better knowing that they aren't with psycho Mary and her husband, at least for a while. What the future holds for Tony and the other kids, especially because Tony's adoption was apparently illegal, makes me sick, but I'm going to wish for the best. I need a damn drink. That is crazy, dude. Yeah. That is crazy. I feel like it was the right move because it's like the consequences of not doing that, I feel like are too higher. Like the risk is too yeah, high. Yeah, I mean, these are children. These are innocent exactly. children. I told my coworker what an idiot she is for her horrible baby names. I'm just a brutally honest guy. Am I the a-hole? You know what they say? What? Honesty without empathy is cruelty. I heard that honesty is the best policy. That's what I've heard. Yeah, but if you're gonna if you're gonna be honest, you're probably also gonna be an asshole. I cannot believe that there's a split opinion for this at my office, but here we go. A coworker of mine, 39 female, recently had twin boys after a long battle with infertility. She has made her first appearance into the office with her new babies to introduce them to our team. That's the infertility jackpot right there. When people asked what she named the boys as up until this appearance, she was undecided. She told me that she was naming them Sean. Okay, that sounds normal. Terrible name. How dare you? So when I asked about the other baby, she said, um, no, they're both Sean. One with an A and one with an E. So there's S-E-A-N and S-E-E-N. S-E-E-N? That is seen. <laughs> It's Sean. That is Sean. Scene. You just named your kid Sean and Scene. The coworker's last name is also Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so when I pointed this out, she said, yes, it's like Tom Tom or JJ. I immediately and without thinking said, that is the most idiotic <laughs> thing I've heard. And it's going to be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
God. A bunch of people laughed and a bunch of people looked away. After she left, I got a few text messages saying, it's not my place to comment on people's choice of name. Am I the a-hole for saying that is a terrible naming idea? And some additional information. No, they don't have middle names. She wanted their names to be like Tom Tom or JJ. This apparently is not the first round of negative feedback she has had. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. We're on good terms. We have worked together across three companies over 12 years. And she said, it'll grow on you. The names are both pronounced Sean, like Sean, S-H-A-W-N. There's a decent, actually, uh, amount of meat left on it. Some meat on the bones. Uh, like everyone watching Sam right here uh, is, is it a dumb the name April. or is it not? I mean... It's definitely a dumb name. I mean, okay. that's dumb but as... But question, question. If someone tells you their baby name and you think it's dumb as a brick, do you tell them to their face? My coworker's husband, who is also a coworker, saw the post last night. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Yikes. They had a good chuckle and ended up agreeing with the replies that the naming process wasn't ideal and maybe the overwhelming process of having two newborns left them too tired to think straight. Despite the fact that they had already sent off the paperwork to births, deaths, and marriages office, the place you lodge births for in Australia. They called up the Brisbane office and the paperwork had only been provisionally processed due to Christmas time and they have used this time to reassess. They have withdrawn the paperwork for scene only, the S-E-E-N. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still one Sean. And they'll think of a new name, but they are keeping Sean Sean as they like it. I've also been reported to HR for making this Reddit post, not by the parents. They think it's hilarious. So well, well, if it isn't the consequences of my actions, they also want everyone to know that calling her an idiot wasn't the worst thing I've said to her this year. And while I'm definitely an a-hole, that it's more of a general thing than being tied to the situation. Happy holidays, everyone. And there is a final update. All right, let's blaze through it. A lot of people wanted an update post on my meeting with HR for whatever reason. So here it is. But as expected, it was underwhelming. I met with HR yesterday. The meeting was pretty brief and definitely a waste of everyone's time. They asked if I was aware of the company's social media policy. I said I was. and I'm fairly confident that I hadn't breached it. They agreed I hadn't and asked me to be more considerate of my coworkers feelings and to not push this meeting all over the internet. What are we doing here? OB, they have your post. I said, I'll definitely be doing an update and that I'll be sure not to call the person naming their child Scene Sean an idiot. Again, I work in banking and while there is a long way to go to fixing the culture across the entire banking organization, I think HR was just doing their thing and making sure I'm on notice in case, I don't know, I take a photo of me stealing candy from a baby while wearing the company logo or something like that. Wow, that was quite the adventure. <laughs> It was quite the adventure. But I think something I want to know from everyone else is, one, is OP the a-hole? I think maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. But two, what are the worst baby names that you've heard? Ooh. Put your answers in the comments below. They gave their baby a dumb name, so I just pointed out how stupid and dumb that baby name is. Am I the a-hole? I have a tradition of making tooth fairy pillows for my friends and family when someone is pregnant. I embroider a fancy crest on it with the child's initials in the center. One of my cousins announced she and her husband were pregnant. They announced it online. And of course, I was excited for her. I messaged her and asked if she wanted me to make a pillow for her baby. And she said, yes. Okay. I told her I could make it now or wait until the baby is born and make it then. I always give people the option to keep the name a surprise. She wanted me to make it now so that she could show her in-laws as the baby name was going to have significance to her husband's family. Ooh, <laughs> the, huh? the, the tension is building. Well, this is where it gets awkward. She told me the name and it's a lot lovely name. However, the first name starts with an A. Okay. The middle name starts with an S. Ooh. And their last name starts with an S. I asked her if she really wanted me to embroider that on a pillow. She video called me at that moment, laughing hysterically, saying she didn't even realize and that she was going to have a talk to her husband about it and hold off. I go about my business thinking, phew, bullet dodge for that kid. Yeah. And then she and her husband would get a good laugh about their almost mistake. 
Nope. A couple hours later, her husband called me and laid into me about how the name chosen was special and I was trying to turn it crass and make juvenile jokes out of something that was so meaningful to his family. You joked on yourself, buddy. Yeah, you literally named your kid. He said a lot, but that was the gist of it. He told me I was an ass. And that he didn't want my stupid pillow and told me to stay away from his family as clearly I had no respect for them. I honestly didn't realize it would be that big of a problem. I just didn't want to embroider profanity on a pillow. Not for a baby anyway. His reaction has me wondering if maybe my mind is in the gutter and I'm the only one who has a problem with it. So... Am I the a-hole? There is an update, but John, what do you think? I love how we're asking if he's the a-hole for writing a That's so great. Meta. He was basically like, hey, are you just want to double really check? Do you want me to put a Do you want me to put this on the pillow? I think that's fine. Before I could decide what to do, my cousin and her husband called. For all of you calling him an a well, you were right. He is an a too. The third, to be precise. <laughs> Wait, they're all a he always went by middle name, so I didn't know. He's getting in a lot of pressure from his parents to carry on the family tradition for his unborn son. He apparently was also bullied a lot in school for his initials. He was actually really sorry for going off of me. I guess my cousin called him laughing about it, and he didn't want to get mad at her, so he redirected to me, the messenger. Straub broke the camel's back kind of situation. He admitted he's got some issues to work through, but he gave me a proper and I feel sincere apology, and my cousin has promised me some of my favorite chocolate is on the way to my house as we speak. I'm relieved because I didn't want family functions to become awkward, nor did either of us want the wrath of our grandma to befall cousin's husband. They've been discussing it, and they're going to go with the name they actually like rather than making their son an <laughs> They did ask nicely if I would still make a pillow, but after the kiddo is born, so his dad won't have pre-warning the kiddo won't be an ass. Also, and they have the whole name to figure out again, too. I will make them the pillow after the chocolate arrives. Oh, I, I feel like that wrapped up in a bow. It, it, it really did. Nice. I that mean, the nice. fact, you know, it was the, it was the trauma of being of being, yeah. an ass being that an ass. he just, you know, he couldn't help but unleash upon OP. Yeah, you know, he's, he's still figuring out his identity. That's a, that's exactly my ex has a restraining order against me and wants to evict me from my home. I don't care about the law. I'm not leaving. Am I the a-hole? Dang, when you got a whole restraining order against somebody, don't restrain yourself. Don't stop. <laughs> Keep going. My ex-wife and I had a rocky marriage and my alcoholism didn't help. There we go. All right, OP. Well, at least you could admit to stuff. She pushed for a divorce. We lived together during the divorce and one day I found out she was dating another man. I snapped and hit her pretty hard. I was charged with assault, spent three months in jail, went to anger management and i was also issued a three-year restraining order which probably honestly good yeah this was two years ago i've since sobered up met a wonderful woman and moved to a completely different apartment complex in a completely different part of the city and have never had any further contact with my ex-wife i admit what i did was wrong i paid the price i've since re-established myself my current woman who i've been in a relationship for two years is aware of this background story which makes things slightly easier well, unknown to me, my ex moved into my apartment complex about five months ago with her now new husband who had always lived here. I just didn't know this. Wow. I saw her in the lobby just before New Year's. She greeted me. I turned shocked and said hello. She asked me what I was doing in the lobby. I said I was just coming in from work and she told me the restraining order is still in effect and that I need to move out. Wow. I, I can't imagine that is legal. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I tried to reason with her and told her I'd be happy to steer clear of her. I know we don't live on the same floor. I don't even know what floor she lives on. I don't care to know. I told her if I saw her in an elevator, I wouldn't get in and just wait for the next one. She told me she was going to enforce the restraining order against me. My partner and I literally signed a brand new two-year lease six months ago. We love the place we live in and wouldn't want to move. And it feels unjust having to move slash incur financial hardship because the person I had a restraining order against moved into my apartment complex. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because last night, the building manager was informed of the restraining order and told us we need to figure this out. So the question is, would she really be able to force me out of my home even though I lived here before?
before her, as long as I do my best to avoid any contact with her, which I'm perfectly fine doing. Shouldn't that be sufficient? I work a really early schedule, and I learned of the fact that she has been dating this guy and coming over to this apartment complex for the entire time I've been here. We just recently have crossed paths. She's been living here full time for the past five months. I'm not sure what to do. FYI, this is New York City. I mean, John, what do you think? It could get very, very dicey. If that's all true, that it seems like probably a reasonable situation and that I would guess you would go to a court and like basically like sp state your case of like, hey, like basically everything you just said. I feel like she has every right to enforce the restraining order, especially with that additional context. But John, there is an update. Okay, well, let's see. The public defender that represented me was no longer practicing in the New York City area, but I retained a lawyer who is a friend of a friend who has experience in this area. My lawyer got references from my parole officer, employer, and AA sponsor. Our goal was to get the restraining order modified to a simple no contact order with no distance requirements so I could continue living with my partner. I spoke to the judge, told him my story, and what I had done to correct my past transgressions. He reviewed my record and we submitted our references. During this time period, I was crashing on a friend's couch as to not violate my protective order. The parole officer said I had to pay my fines, followed all the rules, and never once had to remind me of my restrictions and so forth, and said he was impressed with my turnaround. So the parole officer saying like basically everything that OP did was good. On his side, essentially. My employer said that I was always early, never seemed to be under the influence or a hangover from anything, and even at our company functions, was very open and honest about my sobriety and didn't partake in drinking. My AA sponsor said good things about me too, how he was impressed with my maturity and openness on my alcoholism and addiction. The judge asked my ex-wife to speak. My ex-wife said she was shocked by my turnaround. She said that it seemed unfair to her to require me to move because she moved into my building unknowingly and that she no longer felt threatened by me. This was a shock to both my lawyer and I as I expected my ex to want to keep the protective order in place. The judge said that he wouldn't modify the protective order, but in fact, lift it entirely as he felt it had served its purpose and that based on my references, my testimony, and most importantly, the testimony of my ex, that he didn't see how keeping it in place was benefiting anyone anymore. He did tell my ex that if she ever felt threatened or in danger because of something I said or did, she could contact the police. The judge then told me his main reason for lifting the order was to allow me to live in my current apartment, but advised that it was a good idea to avoid contact with my ex to avoid potential complications down the road. He reminded me because of my past, it wouldn't take much to get another protective order in place. I told the judge I had no intention of talking slash contacting my ex and I was thrilled that I don't have to move and get to stay with my current girlfriend. So over the course of this weekend, I moved back into my apartment with my girlfriend and I'm glad that this was resolved. Every once in a blue moon, Sam, we have a story that has a happy ending. But you know what we would like to hear? We would like to hear from our public subscribers about, you know, who are some people that you actually saw do a turnaround? Please share in the comments below. My brother was bullying a kid for taking the bus, so I'm never driving him to school again. Now he has to take the bus with all the other losers. Am I the a-hole? Give him a taste of his own medicine. Ooh, it tastes nasty. It tastes like the bus floor. My brother, 15, goes to the same private school that I attended. It's full of a bunch of spoiled rich kids whose entire identity is surrounded by how much money their parents make. If you don't get a car by 16, you'll be bullied without a doubt. God, I As hate you that. should be. So a friend shared a TikTok her sister posted, and it was a group of boys bullying a kid waiting for the bus. They were mocking him, laughing at him, and at one one point someone off camera threw food at the kid i recognized two kids one of them being my brother oh my oh, god jeez i told my parents and they brushed it off saying he's a teen boy uh, you know how they get oh. just take away the bentley for a couple of days and he'll learn his lesson when my brother got home i told him what he did wasn't right and he walked away laughing i told my mom as long as he continues to bully people and they do nothing about it i won't take him to school anymore. Smart. 
That is actually genius. This will mean that he'll have to take public transportation because my parents leave too early for work to take him to school. My parents are livid saying I'm an a-hole for being so unreasonable and sensitive over a joke. Let him take the bus. Am I in the wrong here? This show was sponsored by your sweet sexy ass. If you support our Patreon, you'll get one long, hard, extra bonus episode every week. I'm talking three juicy stories right into those ear holes. You'll get ad-free episodes. I'm talking all of those ads completely <laughs> off. All natural. Not to mention, we'll do it together, live, in front of a camera. With Assholes Anonymous, you'll get a chance to talk to us directly and maybe be featured on the YouTube channel. Wait, say, but not like that. Like, the fans get to share their stories with us and other fans, and we get to talk about it, right? And then we'll moon each other at the end. Oh, God. So if you want all that axe ass, support your boys at patreon.com slash OKOP show. That's patreon.com slash OKOP show. So real quick, Sam, is OP being the a-hole here? No, OP is actually being a parental figure, unlike these actual parents. On to the first update. Hey, y'all. So tomorrow is his first day taking the bus since my parents couldn't find anyone else to take him. Nice. Giving that medicine back to him. I'll I'll update y'all this weekend and tell you how the week went. Now it's pretty late, and I don't think I'll be doing any replies, but I do want to clarify two things. One, I bought my car with my money. My parents didn't. It's not their car. It's mine. Two. I'm not parenting my brother. I don't know how anyone jumped to that conclusion. If I no longer wish to go out of my way and pay for gas to take him to and from school every day, I don't have to. Like I said, he has to take the bus and all it costs for kids under 18 is a dollar. Two dollars a day is not going to hurt my parents in the slightest. Lol. Also, I would take the bullied kid to school if I knew who he was. The principal and vice principal had the video sent to them already. So if I find who the kid is, I'll see if his parents are okay with me taking him to school. That's awesome yeah shout out to for not doing only that. punish the bully but uplift the bullied yes i can't make any promises on anything happening since i know how this school is and how they deal with bullying and i'm not sharing this tiktok on here there seems to be some confusion i said he goes to the same school i attended not attend ah I graduated and I'm not a minor. Lol. Okay, so this is the last I'm adding on to this. I don't know how me questioning if my actions were right or wrong led to people discussing me living with my parents. Then again, it's the internet, so I'm not surprised. So I was giving my brother rides even when I was moved out, but I lived with a crappy roommate and then I moved back home. I am to move back out in less than a month if it all works out. And if it doesn't, then I'm at home longer than I anticipated. Why are strangers so bothered my parents aren't forcing me me to move out. Laughing emoji. On to the final update. So as I said, I'm no longer taking my brother to school and my parents couldn't find anyone else to take him. So he did have to take the bus. Someone mentioned why not Uber or Lyft? And that's because my parents don't trust either of them. I mean, that's honestly good because then that's then, then that's that like, means he has to take the bus. Yeah. Thing is, he was off the hook the first three days, October 27th to the 29th, which is why y'all didn't get an update on the weekend because my mom let him stay home the first day. Oh, my what? God. Then one of his friends was taking him, which stopped because he was grounded as he was one of the bullies. <laughs> God, then the next Monday through Thursday, November 1st to 4th, he had to get on the bus. I love how it took him four days to actually take the bus and get his punishment. <laughs> this guy is just like slipping, slipping out of every possible crevice. There's too many friends. You gotta yeah. take away his friends. On Monday, he still took me as a joke, woke me up and told me to take him to school. I said no. Nah. And that's when it hit that I was dead serious. I gave him a dollar and told him to take the bus. <laughs> yeah. As some of you guessed, he hated it. And according to my mom, I quote unquote made him have a panic attack because he had to take public transportation. Honestly, good. I'm not, I'm not I'm sad not about mad. that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Anyways, yada, yada, yada. He missed the bus and was late to school. Oh my God. The other days he took the bus and I didn't hear anything about him being bullied for it. Cause he's the bully. <laughs> yeah. He's the source of the issues. To those of you who claims I was making him take the bus to get bullied Friday, my mom let him stay home again because you guessed 
watched it. He didn't want to take the bus. What a pampered puss. Is he just going to not get an education? He's just, yeah, bro. He's just going to drop out of school. So he only took it those four days. And for those of you who think I stopped him from taking an easy way out, literally piss off because that is not the case. It's not hard to see why I stopped taking him. You guys are reaching. If you see your kid making fun of another kid, let them experience what it's like to be the thing that they're making fun of. You know, it's like, oh, you're making fun of the band nerds. You're signing up for tuba lessons right now. When people bully other people, it's because they don't have empathy for the position of the bullied kid. Exactly. And so your job as a parent is to instill empathy in that kid for those people. Most of the time, like putting him on the bus. He's, yeah, he's, it doesn't harm them. It doesn't harm him at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. My friend exploded on me for asking if she was pregnant, but her top does look way bigger. Am I the a-hole? My male, 25, friend, female, 23, usually goes to the gym regularly and parties a lot. Lately, I've noticed that she stopped drinking entirely, same as smoking, and has stopped heavy lifting and going to the gym as regularly as she used to. On top of that, lately, she'll often excuse herself to go to the toilet, presumably to throw up, and I've noticed she got a bit thicker and watery. Don't get me wrong. I'm not jabbing her looks. I've just noticed. Also, her chest has noticeably grown. Uh, OP is, I'm sorry, entirely too observant. Like going to the bathroom, presumably I've to throw up. She's gone from a 36 C to a 36 double D. When we were out the other week and I noticed she didn't have even a touch of her Red Bull, I pulled her aside to have a private conversation. And he asked, John, he asked something that you never ask a woman ever. Hmm. Are you pregnant? She immediately flipped out and denied it. Right after she went home and I covered for her when the group asked me why she went home. I texted her later the same night if I overstepped and she simply replied, you literally called me fat douchebag. I never did such a thing, but I simply let her be instead of arguing. Today, another friend told me she indeed is pregnant and I don't know what to make of her reaction towards me when I asked her in a four eye conversation. Am I the a-hole? There is an edit, but John what do you think? Yeah, I think OP is the a-hole because it's like, if you ask someone, are you pregnant? And they say no, it's kind of insinuating that they look kind of fat. And it's just like, a, it's just a weird question That's a weird to question ask. to ask. Yeah. I, I also just, I can't imagine asking any of my friends if they're pregnant. If there is an update, but question to the audience. Is there ever an appropriate time to ask a woman, are you pregnant? Uh, if you think it's your baby. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's maybe the one that and only true. time. Well, this post has been a waste of time, except you don't do that, which is most of the replies. There's been little actual useful feedback. Why don't you do that? Why is it not socially acceptable to ask a close friend a normal question in a private setting? It's none of your business. Like if that's the energy, you can apply that to any question ever. It's simply a yes slash no comment thing. Are we still in the 1950s? Okay. <laughs> I love how everyone's like, bro, you don't ask that. And he's like, what? I can't ask if a girl's pregnant. Are we still in the 1950s or something? She messaged me and we met up during lunch break. She apologized for overreacting. And I apologized for if my question was intrusive. We came to the conclusion that my question wasn't intrusive. And she also didn't overreact. She told me she's two months pregnant and didn't think anyone had noticed. Little does she know, eagle eyed man on the tatas noticed your you're a full cup bigger. Eagle eye OP. She was keeping it a secret, at least to the guy circle of her group, because she was afraid of being called a wh That's why she freaked out when I asked. And it's also why she tried to deflect it by saying I called her fat. I reassured her that no one would think she's a wh especially not in our group. We're all very supportive and are looking forward to doing our best to help her out the following months. I also showed her the post and she had a good laugh at some of the way over the board. You're the comments, especially the ones calling me a pervert. To be fair, she said all, many of them also had valid points, but that they, in most cases, rather concern strangers and not close friends you've shared big things with before. So after all, I retract my second edit and I'm actually happy with how this turned out, especially after receiving more useful feedback from the point I made in the second edit. Some of y'all got too butthurt over edit two, though. L-M-A-O. So Question, again, is OP the a-hole? And number two, is there any appropriate time to ask, are you pregnant? I still feel like OP just weirds me out. I don't know. I just get a such a strange vibe. Okay, what if your friend is like obviously like six months pregnant? 
I mean, are you going to ask, are you pregnant or are you just going to be like going on as normal? I feel like if you're like freaking six, seven, eight months pregnant, like you're telling people. Wow. I, I feel like that's wow, John. A, not a reasonable hypothetical scenario. <laughs> wow, John. So what you're saying, <laughs> she doesn't really have the choice <laughs> of whether to tell you or not. No, people would. I, I, I so I mean, there's definitely We've people who've gotten away. stories of people who have been like eight months pregnant and said like nothing to anyone. That's true. That's true. But generally speaking, like 99% of the time, like you're going to tell people that you're pregnant. Like it's obvious. Yeah, Some people the, hide it though. We're Some talking about the it. edge cases. Okay, dog. fine. I don't know. I guess I, I guess I would eventually. Ha. John would ask if you're pregnant. <laughs> if John's an <laughs> asshole, Got him. call 1-800. Put it in the comments. <laughs> My parents are trying to force me into an arranged marriage, but they just caught me with another man. I refuse to follow their traditions. Am I the a-hole? I, 22 female, moved out of my parents' house last year to a condo that is 30 minutes away. I did this because I hate living with them as they're very controlling and like to force my siblings and me to follow their beliefs. That's not fun. Stop trying to control me, mom. Yeah. Stop trying to control me, dad. Yeah. And stop trying to control me, father. My oldest Sister 24 female is like my parents, very traditional and controlling. My parents never approved of us getting a boyfriend. They believed in an arranged marriage and prohibit us from engaging in premarital sex. I mean, my parents never said like, don't engage in premarital sex, but they're like, they, they weren't like, you know, have monkey sex in the house. Mine did. <laughs> they let it be known. <laughs> but I don't care about this bullshit. I'm party as yeah. Uh, that's what I'm assuming OP is saying. It's not what they uh, actually said. Okay. <laughs> I've had boyfriends behind their backs and only my youngest sister, 16 female, knows about it as we are very close. I have a boyfriend, 23 male, whom I have been going out for eight months now. Yesterday, I invited him over to hang out at my home and guess what they did, John? What? <laughs> 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 My oldest sister decided to visit me out of nowhere and caught us in the act. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> It pissed me off so much that she visited without notifying me. She then started screaming at me and called me a whore for sleeping around. I tried to make her understand that it was my boyfriend. And even if I was sleeping around, it was none of her freaking business. Ooh. She didn't like my answer and proceeded to call my parents to snitch on me. Well, they were pissed. And my mom started going on about how I committed a sin. I'm an atheist, but she doesn't respect it. And forced me to break up with my boyfriend. My dad started saying how it was time they find a groom for me and that I would behave. I kicked them out of my house and told them to only talk to me if they're willing to apologize to my boyfriend and me for disrespecting us. My mom is now trying to guilt trip me by stating that she's my mom and has sacrificed a lot to raise me. I know that she sacrificed a lot, but I'm not too fond of the way she's treating me. I'm 22, not 12. <laughs> Mike drop, OP. You old as fuck. They're still pissed and have spammed my phone. My cousins heard about it and forced me to apologize to my parents and sisters for kicking them out and yelling at them. I refuse to do so and block them. My youngest sister and boyfriend are on my side. She even called my oldest sister for being a nosy bitch. But nobody is listening to her and she is not an adult. She's just 16 after all. Loser. So am I the asshole for standing up for myself and my boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Sam's performance comedy, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Jim Carrey over here. Thank you. Thank you. There's a little edit, but okay. um, what do you think? Off rip? Absolutely not. I applaud OP for standing up for what she wants. Look, at the end of the day, you just can't. Or laying down for what she wants. Ah, fuck my phone. Oh, my God. Uh, well, you know, something else is standing up. Both of our wieners. Oh. Yeah, we're rock hard. <laughs> That's while recording these. Yep. This yep. is why we, you, you know, you can't see below the waist. What do you think's holding up this microphone right here? No, oh, man. But no, OP is not in the wrong and you, you just can't control people, especially your kids at the end of the day. But here's a little edit for some clarity. Everyone asks if I was Indian and the answer is yes. I'm Indian, but not from India. My sister got into my house with a spare key I gave her and I trusted her to use it with my knowledge. But since she breached my trust, I have taken it away from her and my parents. I don't think I can go no contact with my parents, but thank you everyone for your opinion and take on this issue. I definitely will get some distance between us and try to make them understand. But if they still try to be difficult, I'll have to go no contact. 
for a few weeks at least to make them realize I'm legit about this. Thank you again. As for my youngest sister, she can't live with me now, even though I would love to take her in, but she's also planning to move in with me once she turns 18. My parents are unaware with this. Thanks for the context, OP. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious, like for anyone in the comments that has a religious upbringing, religious family, how did you either stick with it or mm-hmm. exit it? Because I mean, there's there's also this whole community of like ex-Mormons, even on like, uh, there's a subreddit, ex-Mormons, and they talk about like how they leave the community gracefully or, or not so gracefully right? so they can just live their own lives as they see fit because not not all of them have the same ideals and morals and as their family did. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I think there are some parents in these situations who have these beliefs because of their religion where they want to, you know, kind of control, orchestrate, arrange the marriage and things of that nature. And again, like I said before, I, I understand if that's what they've been kind of essentially indoctrinated to believe yeah. like their whole life. I understand how they get there, but ultimately it's your kid's choice. It's your kid's you know, choice. Once, once your kid is flown the coop, I mean, you can only suggest things you can't control. Exactly. But what we'd love to hear Two, st- two sides of the coin, either your religious exit stories mm-hmm. or, you know, your parents being controlling stories or your best someone walked in while you were doing it stories. Oh, dude. Those ones got to be good. Too. Gotta be juicy. Like, oh, ju- juicy, slimy, oh. drenched in sweat. Oh, God. We want to hear those. Put them in the comments. My dad stole my mom's most prized possession during the divorce, but I'm going to steal it back. Am I the a-hole? It was the pegging paraphernalia. Prized. Wow. possession super prized so my dad and i 25 male aren't close and i was never interested in having a relationship with him he was a type of guy that was out all the time with his friends and never home my mom divorced him when i was 12 and it got ugly sometime during the divorce we came home and stuff was missing not his stuff by the way because that was cleaned out when he left so yeah he's 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 taking from the family jeez one of the things missing was my mom's bracelet that she kept in a small box under some stuff in the closet. This bracelet was super special to her. Her parents were toxic AF, but my mom was really close to her English teacher slash mentor in high school who was like a mom to her. Her teacher gave her that bracelet at her high school graduation and my mom kept it all these years. Wow. My dad knew she treasured it and who else would look in that specific place and take only a bracelet when there was other stuff in the house. She knew it was him too, but he always played dumb. The divorce was finalized and we didn't see my dad after that. My mom never got it back. Last June, she got the vid and unfortunately didn't make it. Oh no. I was broken over that. Still am, I guess. Glad at least me, my sister, and my stepdad have each other for support. Around October, my sister told me that my dad wants to talk to me, so she gave him my number. He apologized for being being a piece of shit dad and asked if we could meet to talk at his place. I was ready to straight up say no, but then I remembered he stole her bracelet and maybe there was a chance to get it back. I've asked my sister before to push him about it since they talk, but she only asked him once and left it at that. I decided I could handle one visit just to see if he has it, so I told him I'd hear him out. So yeah, I met at his place. We caught up on stuff. He told me his sorry story about being immature and too focused on stuff that wasn't more important than being a dad or whatever, I ended up bringing the bracelet up and how important that was to me since my mom's not here anymore. He kept trying to act like it wasn't him until I said the only way I'd consider having a father-son relationship is if he just stopped with that and gave me my mom's bracelet. Which also, like, if you're trying to, like, reconnect, why would you lie about yeah, that? Maybe it's like he's so embarrassed about it that he's, like, possibly doesn't even want to admit it to himself. I don't know if it was valuable or if he sold it and he was like, oh, I, like, oh, yeah, be- sold it a long time ago. <laughs> Yikes! But... He finally gave in and thank God he actually kept it instead of throwing it out. I wonder if it was maybe more of a spite thing. Oh, it was 100% a spite thing. Yeah. He was stealing it just to make his ex-wife feel terrible. He apologized for taking it and knew that it was super childish. I was just happy to have it back, but mad my mom didn't get it before she passed away. I never guaranteed my dad a relationship. I just said I'd consider it, but I already made up my mind that I don't want 
anything to do with him. It's been months since our meeting and my sister is pissed because my dad is disappointed I haven't talked to him. She says I was a huge piece of crap for making him think we'd reconcile. My only goal was getting the bracelet back and I wouldn't have talked to him in the first place if it wasn't for that. So that's why I wonder if I'm the a-hole. My sister is biased here since she was little when they split up and has a different version of him. So, I mean, I think the big question for everyone watching is, is OP the a-hole for, you know, basically just getting the bracelet back and not building the relationship? I mean, I think the dad's definitely the a-hole, but it seems like he's trying to change. It does. It seems like he's trying to change. Although he did continue lying about it when he that's, initially asked. That's so a red flag for me. Maybe not. Maybe that's a not. red flag I for think me. that's a pretty red flag. So if he lied about it a bunch of times before, I'm a little conflicted because he did eventually give it. But, you know, it seems like he did so much terrible stuff in the past that I don't think OP needs to have a relationship with him. Yeah. And she didn't necessarily lie. She said she'd consider it. And she's done her consideration, decided nah. And I think, too, that like we don't know the exact time frame that this all happened in. I think I think I said a couple of weeks. So like this is a very fresh thing. Like OP had mentioned when he was 12 that he basically accepted that his dad was not going to be engaged with him anymore. So like that's a lot so to like many reverse years. in a yeah. few weeks. So I don't think he's the a-hole just because of the time it'll take. And like the dad is like, hey, you did years of damage. You have to put in a lot of time and effort to you yeah. building that trust yeah. back if you want to truly and it's going to take time i don't think opc a hole yeah i don't either but you know who's never the a hole our beautiful commenters oh uh comment your stories and tell us the <laughs> up things your parents did do my uber driver just got into a wreck so i left I probably should have stayed, but I don't want to. Am I the a-hole? I don't care if you're bleeding out. Oh, I'm about to die. Well, I'm about to be late for my meeting. Yeah, I have brunch with Carla. You can deal with your afterlife. I got to deal with this life. I spent $60 on a ride out of town towards a casino tonight. We needed to take a turn, but emergency vehicles were blocking the highway exit. Oddly enough, there were dudes racing their cars to the exit before mine. So we looped around and found ourselves on a long stretch of side road parallel to the main route. This part of the area is a weird mix of warehouses with suburbs out of the city. This long road is apparently perfect for street racing. And we end up going one way while cars are burning down the other lanes. Kind of cool looking, actually. It seems like a big Friday night party. It is kind of cool, low key, but super annoying. Yeah, super annoying. If you're an Uber driver trying to not kill your passengers. So we passed the end of the line where kids are lined up before taking off and one of them crosses in front of us after his run to get in and we smash. Oh God. And it felt so good to smash. No, uh, the Uber driver might've been going 10 miles per hour faster than he should have been, but with all the chaos, it seemed safe enough. As he hit the brakes, the Ralphie on the bus, I'm in danger meme crossed my mind. I'm sure everyone else who has been in an accident knows that slow motion feeling. I get out of the back and ask ask everyone if they are okay. And it was obvious that there was some bad cosmetic damage, maybe some structural, but nobody was hurt. At this point, my destination is a mile away and last call is less than an hour. Man's got his priorities. I gotta get drunk. Come on. I look at the driver and tell him I am not mad at him at all and he can have my number, but I'm not sticking around. The racers seem cool, but did I leave him in a dangerous position? I don't think so. Nobody wants the police crashing the party and I simply did not want to be involved at that point. So would I be the asshole if I reported it though in the app to get my money back? <laughs> not only does he leave the driver to get a drink but he wants to report the driver too that's funny he took me 19 of the 20 miles but then again i did have to walk and 60 bucks is 60 bucks for me then again he may need it more three i'm not going to lie and pretend i was hurt or anything so that is off the table okay edit hey all it's sober and not rattled me it is legal for a passenger to leave the scene per my state's law okay so what do you think yeah i mean like ultimately it kind of op was uninvolved i feel like low-key is kind of out of their hands yeah. and the driver 
sniper wasn't hurt. If someone was hurt, definitely it's like, okay, wait for an ambulance, like something. But yeah, it's like no one's hurt. This is now just an issue between the two of them because it's the cars, right? So to me, I'm like, yeah, like go ahead and leave. Like there's nothing you can really do. On the... On the refund? The reporting. I mean... You did get into a crash. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, like if the Uber driver, because of their negligence caused a crash, for sure. Like give me give me a refund at a bare minimum, right? If it happened to me, I probably wouldn't try to get my money back from Uber. Me four years ago might have. College me, 60 bucks is 60 bucks. Depending on how hurt my neck is, I might be like, call Jacob.com. <laughs> Let me get some lawsuit money out of this. But probably not now. And I probably wouldn't have done it then, honestly. Yeah. Is the money coming out of the Uber driver or from Uber? I think coming out of Uber, because usually the drivers are insured. That's what I'm saying. But they probably might lose their driving thing. Actually, yeah. Wow. That's like so much worse. So I probably wouldn't report. Yeah, I don't think that's the move, which it doesn't that OP was just asking. As I contemplate it more, I am going to seek my money back. If that makes me an asshole, so be it. I consider it justice. I'm the one who paid for the service that was not fulfilled. I'm the one sitting next to a crumpled door and was at risk of both drivers being stupid. Screw both of those guys. Yeah, I mean, I totally hear OP in that perspective. Like you were involved in an accident and the driver is going faster than he should have. That is true. I guess I can't really blame there. For me, it's like if there was no ultimate like true harm done, I just had to walk a mile. Eh, it's a story, you know. I mean, I'm not one to like go and leave bad reviews even when things are bad. I'm just like, I feel like it takes more mental energy than it's worth. But what would you do? Would you leave a bad review or would you try to get your money back from this crashed Uber? Put your answers in the comments below. We just love hearing from you in general. We'd love to see your comments. See you on the see next you one.